Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had an awesome, awesome weekend and that you've had a good day so far and that you're ready to join me for some quadratic sequences. If you are new here, I would like to invite you to enroll in our Grade 11 science class. Um, and in order to do that, um, I'm going to quickly show you how you would do it. So let's quickly go to my desktop and we're going to go and find you need whatever browser you use i use mozilla firefox but i mean you can use your google chrome or whatever you prefer and then you type in to enable.org to enable.org and you will get to a landing page i forgot to i keep forgetting to do this i forgot to log out so i'm going to quickly log out Right, so this is the landing page that you will we land on to. And then if you guys have never registered with us, then obviously you have to fill in your first name, last name, and your email address and register. That's it, okay? Um, I think you then get an email and they ask you to put a password in. That's how easy this is. If you have registered, which I obviously have, you can just put your details in there. It remembers your login if you wanted to. And you get onto this beautiful page. Right, so now you guys won't have admin and you won't have my classroom but you will have this thing on the left hand side okay and it'll say choose subject progress result progress and results and to enable help online and you guys need to press the red button because you need to choose your subject and when you click that you'll see all the subjects that to enable offers work on in platform different types of um, work in on all their plat on their platform for example there's life sciences life orientation etc etc geography but we're looking at math now so you'll click on mathematics and you'll see all the options now when you guys do be grade one through to grade 12 and um it, it doesn't for me because i've already registered with some of these courses so you would have grade one through to grade 12 so you're going to choose one to choose grade 11 i'm going to just choose grade seven just so you can see what happens and then what happens is you click the green button which says enroll and it'll now say you are now registered for mathematics in your case there'll be grade 11 and you can say okay and then what will happen is you'll have a blue block. Okay, and your blue block will say grade 11 mathematics. And if you click on that, then what will happen is that you'll end up with all the information of all the different sections that are in grade 11 and that you can go through. And if, for example, you'll see that there is an exam week here, junior exam revision, if you click that, there'll be a whole bunch of exam papers and their memos, etc., etc. But for more importantly for these lessons are these things that are on the left hand side here, which are the live assessments and upcoming events and messaging. Those are the three that are the main things. So the live assessments, the idea behind this is, or behind the system is that ideally you guys would all register into the class or enroll into the class and not just watch this through whatever portal you come through. And then what happens is at the end of the section, I could give you guys a live quiz or an online quiz, which you can do in your own time. I'll give you two or three days. And I don't get the results according to person. I get like a quantitative result. So I'll see, oh, look, 30% of the people didn't understand question two. So then I'll go look at question two and I see, oh yes, question two is on, I don't know, timelines. And then I can go and reteach timelines and make sure you guys understand. So that's the whole important thing about live assessments. Upcoming events is where you want to be right now because that is going to tell you about the lessons that are coming up. And since I am registered with four classes, I will obviously have all four on here. You guys, if you register with just grade 11 maths or enroll in grade 11 maths, you'll only have that. And then you click view event, okay? And you say open live TV link. And you'll come across this screen. Now you're welcome to open the feed in a new tab. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But ideally, well, what most important thing is that even if, if you open it in a new tab, you need to press the green button to join the event. So you join the event and you will have the video come up now. There's a little bit of a time delay in the recording and the, the, the sending out the signal, obviously. And you'll come across this screen. Now you're welcome to open 
Okay, so there you could hear it. And then obviously it'll play in the screen and you can make it bigger you, if you want to, which I would suggest you do because it's quite small. And then this is a very important, it's a message studio button. And that's the other reason I want you to enroll. If you watch through this system and not through just any other link, then you will be able to message me and you'll be able to tell me about certain sections that you'd like to go through. If there's questions you have, et cetera, et cetera, you can message us and you can tell us what you need to go through and we can make a plan to make that happen happen. Right, so that is what enrolling the class, what, what, how you enroll the class and what it means to enroll the class. But now let's move on to our quadratic sequences. So we've been doing um, all the different types of sequences, arithmetic and geometric sequences, and we've talked about sum to infinity, etc, etc. Now let's talk about a quadratic sequence. So a quadratic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the second difference between any two consecutive terms is constant. The second difference, okay? So if, for example, we've got these numbers 1, 2, 4, 7, and 11, I'm writing them out like this so it's easy to see what the second difference is. So the first difference, T difference 1, D1, is just going to be T into T, oh, term 2 minus term 1, and then term 3 minus term 2, etc. So it's just like going for an AP. So you're just going to subtract them. So I'm going to change color so you can see. So it's going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. This is going to be 4 minus 2, which is 2. This is going to be 7 minus 4, which is 3. And this is going to be 11 minus 7, which is 4. So you can see the difference 1, the first difference, D1, is not the same, okay, at all, okay? But, but if I look now for the second difference, Okay, the second difference, which is going to be the difference between consecutive um, differences again, you've got minus one, which is obviously, and you've got four minus three, which equals. So you can see that it's pretty obvious that the second difference here is the same the whole way through, the second difference. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to prove it to you theoretically. We're going to go through a general case and the reason for that is we're going to then develop the formula that we use to solve the quadratic series and sequences. Okay, so they tell us that the general term formula is Tn equals An squared plus Bn plus C, which may look familiar to you because if you think about it, if you've got a quadratic equation, it becomes y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And this is the formula for the term for the quadratic sequence. And there's an an squared, there's an ax squared, there's a bn, bx, and c and c. So you can see it's got the same form. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the nth term for n equals 1, or n equals 2, and or n equals 3. Okay, so if n equals 1, do you agree that the first term, t1, is going to be a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c, which is the same as a plus b plus c, okay? And that is term 1, okay? Term 2, I'm just going to do this quickly so you can see the difference. Term 2 is going to be a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. So that becomes 4a plus 2b plus c. Okay. And term 3 is going to be a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c which becomes 9a squared plus 3b plus c. Okay, now we need to find the first difference. Remember the first difference, we're just subtracting this lot, okay? So if we had to look at this one, it would be 4a plus 2b plus c minus bracket, everything in the bracket, a plus b plus c, which becomes 4a minus a is 3a, plus 2b minus b is plus b, plus c minus c goes away. How am I getting this? Because the minus times the plus is a minus, minus times the plus is a minus, and minus times the plus is a minus, okay? 
Let's do this one. We've got 9a squared plus 3b plus c minus bracket 4a plus, why is it suddenly a squared? Wasn't a squared, sorry, sorry, it's not a squared. 4a plus 2b plus c. Okay, so then we go 9a minus 4a is 5a plus 3b minus 2b is plus plus 3b minus 2b is plus b plus c minus c goes away and then finally we need the second difference the value of the second difference and i think we're going to use green so if i subtract these two i get 5a plus b minus 3a plus b which just becomes 2a right and that's what we use we use the fact that the second difference equals 2a we use that the first difference the first difference is equal to 3a plus b and then we use that the general formula t1 is equal to a plus b to the c and we use these three equations to solve for the a and the b and the c and that's it. But now listen to me, grade 11s. They don't give you this. So you have to memorize it. Or you just have to memorize how to work it out like this and then memorize it and work it out every time. But seriously, you don't actually be, want to be doing that in the middle of exam because it takes a while. You can do it if you're desperate. If you can't remember how to do it. Um, sorry, D2. It's going to be 2A. So, but memorize this, okay? There are very few things in the maths curriculum that I actually suggest that you memorize, and this is one of them. Admittedly, a lot of the stuff is on the formula sheet, but even so, I prefer if you don't memorize things and you rather just work it out. But this, memorize. Okay, so that's what we're going to use to solve our our general, I mean our quadratic sequences. So let's look at an example. We've got 5, 20, 45, and 80. I'm going to rewrite it here. 5, 20, 45, and 80. And guys, I would immediately go Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. Term 1 is A plus B plus C. Difference 1 is 3A plus B and difference 2 is 2a and now I've got it so now I don't have to try and remember it halfway through the sum and start thinking am I right or am I wrong whatever now I've got it now I can play with my sum and the first thing that we're going to do is work out our first difference so d1 or d first difference is going to be 20 minus 5 is 15 45 minus 20 is 25 80 minus 45 is 35. So do you agree that that is D1 is 15, which is 3A plus B, okay? We also know that 5 is the term 1, which is A plus B plus C. And now we're going to go the common difference, the second difference, D2, is going to be 10. And just to check it, that's also 10. And that, that's 10, and that is equal to 2a. And now we're going to use those three to solve for a plus and b and c. So we go 2a equals 10, therefore a is equal to 5, because you divide both sides by 2. Awesome, so now we've got a. Now we can substitute that into this. Okay, so therefore we go 3a plus b is equal to 15. But A is 5, right? So you've got 3 times 5 plus B is equal to 15. 3 times 5 is 15. So you've got 15 plus B is equal to 15. So therefore B is going to be 0. Okay, so now we know B is 0. Okay, and now we're going to solve, substitute both A and the B into the first equation. So now we need, we've got A, it's 5. So wait, A plus B plus C is going to equal to 5. Do you agree? A plus B plus C equals 5, right? A, we know is 5. B is naught, and we want C. Okay? And that all equals 5. 
So do you agree that we've got 5 plus C is equal to 5, therefore C is equal to 0? Ta-da! So now we can substitute all that into our general equation. So we've got Tn is equal to A, which is 5. So it's 5N squared plus 0N plus C, obviously 0. So you obviously don't write those terms down. So just Tn is equal to 5N squared. Ta-da! Okay, now let's try another one. So this time we've got 3 naught minus 5 and minus 12. 3 naught minus 5 and minus 12. So let's write it out. So we've got 3 naught minus 5 and minus 12. We know that Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. Term 1 equals A plus B plus C. The first difference is equal to 3a plus b, and the second difference is 2a. And obviously, you don't have to write this out every time. You guys can actually just keep, um, you guys can actually obviously um, have it once on your paper. But since I've got a new screen every time, you're going to have to write it down and also it's quite good practice to write it down every time because then you remember it okay so obviously this dude here is equal to a plus b plus c because that is term one now we need to get our other value so do you agree the difference between this is naught minus three which is going to be minus three right this is minus five minus naught which is minus five and this is minus 12 minus minus 5, which is going to be minus 12 plus 5, which is what? It's minus 7. Okay, and guys, obviously you guys don't have to show this row. I'm just showing it so that you know what to do. Okay, so now that is my first difference, which is going to be 3a plus b. And then finally, we need, what color shall we use? Purple. So we need the second difference, which is going to be minus 5 minus minus 3, which is minus 5 plus 3, which is minus 2. And let's check it here. We've got minus 7 minus minus 5, which is minus 7 plus 5, which is minus 2. So therefore, my second difference is going to equal 2a. Okay, so if that's the case, 2a equals minus 2, a is going to equal minus 1. Okay, that's that. Then if I substitute it into the red, we've got 3 times minus 1 plus b is equal to minus 3. So that becomes minus 3 plus b equals minus 3. So b is equal to 0. Okay, happy with that. So now we can substitute it into the dark blue. We've got a, which is minus 1, plus b, which is 0, plus c is equal to 3. Ah, so now we've got a nice number. So now we can say, well, in that case, c is going to be 3 plus 1, which equals 4. So my final answer is going to be tn is equal to a, which is minus 1n squared, plus bn, which is 0n, and then c is plus 4. But obviously you want to write it neat in that. So it becomes minus n squared, we don't write that, plus 4. And that's my final, final answer. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, now, this one is a little bit trickier. This one actually requires a little bit of thought and some work. So let's go for it nice and slowly, okay? So we've got 3b plus 1, 12b plus 1, 27b plus 1, and 48b plus 1. And again, I'm just going to remind you that Tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c. The term 1 is a plus b plus c. Difference 1 is equal to 3a plus b. And difference 2 is 2a. Okay. Now, it's kind of tricky because the b here is, and there's a b here as well. So, but we must just make sure we don't get confused with that, okay? So now, let's go through it. 
Okay, so this is term one, term two, term three, and term four. So this obviously equals A plus B plus C, where obviously that B is not the same as that B there, right? Then we can also get this here. So if we do this, we've got 12B plus one minus three B plus one. So 12b minus 3b is 9b plus 1 minus 1, okay, it goes away. Then we've got 27b plus 1 minus 12b plus 1 is just going to be 27b minus 12b, which is 15b. And then finally, we've got 48b plus 1 minus 27b plus 1. So it ends up with 48b plus 1 minus 27b plus 1, which really just ends up with 48b minus 27b, which is going to be, let's think about that, is going to be 21b. Okay, so this year, and I'm going to write it in red again so you don't get confused, is going to be 3a plus B, where the B is not the same B as that, okay? And then finally, we need the second difference. So 15B minus 9B is 6B, and 21B minus 15B is obviously 6B again. So that is equal to 2A, okay? Therefore, we know that 2A is equal to 6B, so do you agree that A is equal to 3B, which is dividing both sides by 2? So now we know that A, and I'm going to write it up here, A equals 3B. Right. Now we need to substitute into this equation here. But remember, this B is different from that B, okay? So therefore, we've got 3A plus B is equal to... And I'm going to change color again so you don't get confused. 9B. Okay, yeah, I changed blue, it doesn't matter. So then, but this 3A is equal to 3B, right? So we've got 3 times 3B plus B is equal to 9, is equal to 9B, right? So then what do we have? We've got... 3 times 3 is 9b, 9b plus b equals 9b. But now you have to remember that this 9b is the same as that 9b. That 3b is the same as this 9b. So these 9b's cancel and you end up with a little b equaling naught b equal naught. If you guys struggle with this, you're welcome to change these to like z's. You can go, oh, well, that's z, 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 and at the end, just substitute it back in. It's really not going to kill anybody to do that. Okay, so now we've got the b equals naught. Now we can do c. So for c, we've got that a plus b plus c is equal to 3b plus 1. But remember that this is not the same b. So therefore, we've got a is the same as 3b, plus b is 0, plus c is equal to, um, red, 3b plus 1. Okay, so obviously 3b cancels with this 3b, so therefore c is equal to 1. So my final equation is going to be tn is equal to a n squared, which is going to be 3 b n squared, b is 0, and then c is just plus 1. There you go. Sure, a little bit tricky, but it is doable. And like I said, if you struggle with the fact that the b is a similar letter to a, b, and c, then you're welcome to change it to a z or anything that's not a, b, and c, if it makes it easier for you. Right, for example, this one, we've got t minus 2, 4t minus 1, and 16, 16t plus 1. So that's a much nicer one because we don't have to worry about a, b's, and c's. So again, we're going to write tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c. We've got the term 1 is a plus b plus c. 
Our common difference one is going to be 3a plus b, and our common difference two is going to be 2a. Right, so now let's write these out, okay? So you've got t minus 2, 4t minus 1, and 16t plus 1. Okay, so do you agree that this is equal to a plus b plus c? That's that one there. The difference between these two is going to be 4t minus 1 minus t minus 2 or 16t plus 1 minus 4t minus 1. So then we've got 4t, and I'm going to write it out slowly because of this minus in the brackets, okay? So it's 4t minus 1 minus t minus times minus is a plus 2. Or we've got 16t plus 1 minus times plus a minus 4t minus times minus is a plus 1. Okay, so if we add them up, we end up with 3t plus 1. And then this is going to be 12t plus 2. So this year is term 2. So that, that there is equal to term 2, which is 3a plus b. And then finally, when we subtract these two, we end up with 9t plus 1. That is the same as 2a. Okay then, so now what do we need to do? Now we need to solve for a, then for b, and then for c. Sure, okay, so let's do this. So we have that I'm going to erase some of this because we don't need it all, okay? I'm going to erase this and this and this and that because we don't need all of this. And the last thing I'm going to do is just erase this as well so that we don't just to worry about it. Okay, right. So now let's have a look. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to move stuff. So let's have a look. Do you agree we've got 2a is equal to 9t plus 1? Therefore, a is going to be 9t plus 1 all over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that into this equation Yeah. So in order to do that, I'm going to erase the red stuff. Okay, and I'm going to make the writing be blue. So I'm going to go 3 times 9t plus 1 all over 2 plus b is equal to 3t plus 1. Okay, so let's multiply this bracket. So the best thing to do is multiply everything by, mm, maybe not. Well, let's, get, let's just multiply everything by 2. So we end up with 3 times 9 is 27t plus 3 plus 2b is equal to 3t plus 1 times by 2. I forgot to times by 2. t plus 2. Okay, all I did was I multiplied everything by 2. So the whole of this bracket will multiply by 2, but that's fine, cancels the 2. The b gets multiplied with the 2, and the 3t plus 1 gets multiplied by 2. And then at the same time, I multiplied across 3. So we had 27t plus 3. So remember we're solving for b, so we've got 2b is going to be 6t minus 27t plus 2 minus 3. So we've got 27 minus 6 is minus 21t minus 2 minus 3 is 1, so it's going to be minus 1, and that's 2b, so therefore b is going to be minus 21t minus 1 all over b. Okay, so let's just write that up here. We've got a is 9t plus 1 over 2. We've got b is minus 21t minus 1 over 2. And now we need to find c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise all of this, this green stuff and this over here, the dark blue stuff and the green stuff, because we've proved it already. Right, so then we can say 
A plus B plus C, we've got A, it's 9T plus 1 over 2. B is minus 21T minus 1 over 2, plus C is equal to T minus 2. Okay, so again, to make life easy, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I've got 9T plus 1. And then plus, and I put the brackets in here so that it helps me work out this thing here. So it becomes minus 21t minus 1 plus 2c is equal to 2t minus 4. Okay, so let's multiply everything through and then cancel and change across. So we've got 9t plus 1 minus 21t minus 1 plus 2c is equal to 2t minus 4. Okay, and remember this time we're solving for c. We're trying to find c, right? So everything needs to go to the other side. So 2c is equal to 2t plus 21t minus 9t plus 1 minus 1 cancels and you're left with minus 4. So 2c is going to be equal to 2t plus 21t is 23t. Minus 9t is going to be 14t minus 4. If you divide both of those by 2, you get c is equal to 7t minus 2. Okay, so therefore my final equation, my final equation is going to be tn is equal to a, which is, what did we say? It says 9t plus 1 over 2 n squared plus b minus 21t plus minus 1 over 2 n plus c, which is 7t minus 2. There we go. Sure. Okay, so it can look a little bit nasty and horrible. Don't freak out about it if it does. Just slowly work through it baby steps step by step and you'll get the final answer okay right now we're going to move on to analytical geometry revision okay and i'm going to start off with revision because i find that a lot of my students tend to forget what happened in grade 10 and grade 9 i don't know why but they do so we're going to go through the analytical geometry and then we'll do the revision today and then we'll move on to more trickier stuff on wednesday right so first of all the gradient so the gradient is the slope the slope the slope so there are two ways that we can talk about it okay you can either talk about the rise and over the run in other words this bit here this is the rise over the run okay or you could say it's change y over change x or more likely you could say that if you have some random point here let's call this point here x1 y1 and this point here x2 y2 then do you agree that the slope of a graph can be written as the change in y over change in x which is going to be y2 minus y1 it's a change in the rise y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 in other words, how far it went from here to onto here and how far it went from there to there. And guys, it really doesn't matter. You could have also written y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. That is cool too, but you cannot, cannot write y2 minus y1 is equal to x1 minus x2. That is not right because then you are swapping up your values. Okay. So an example would be find the gradient of the line between A32 and B-73. And I know this is ridiculously easy, guys. But I need to make sure you guys can all do this before we move on to the more tricky stuff. Because you need to be able to do this to be able to do the trickier stuff. So A is 0.32. So X is 3, Y is 2. So there is A more or less, 3, 2. And B is minus 7, 3. So B is over here and it's minus 7, 3. Okay, minus 7, 3. Okay, and I always like to draw a little rough diagram. And when I say rough in this case, I actually mean rough. I mean as in it doesn't need rulers and everything. It's usually small on the side of the page. It's just to give me an idea of what exactly is going on. Okay, so now they want the gradient. 
So remember that the gradient is what? The gradient is m is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't matter. It could also be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Okay, and it doesn't matter which order you do it in as long as you keep it consistent. Okay, so I'm going to call A point one and B point two, and then because I'm used to it, I'm going to use this first example. So I'm going to go M equals Y two, this is point two, Y two, which is three minus Y one, which is two, all over X two, which is minus seven minus three, which is going to be 3 minus 2, which is 1, over minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10. Okay, which then equals minus 0, 1, if you really want to. And is this a negative graph? Yes, it is a negative gradient because it's going up to the left. Okay, so that's a negative gradient, and that's exactly what we we're expecting. So therefore, we're happy. Now, let's talk about horizontal lines. Do you agree that... Let's say that this value that, yeah, the y value of this is a three, just for example. Do you agree if I plotted a point, yeah, then this would be x is one, y is three. Or if I plotted a point over, yeah, this would be x is two, y is three. Or if I plotted a point on this side, it would be minus one, three. So do you see that the x values are changing, but the y is not? So if we talk about that, we can say the gradient is changing y over changing x. So the y is shuffling along, it's moving along from, I mean, sorry, the y values are staying the same. You see 3, 3, 3, but the x values, as we go along here, yeah, go from minus 1 to 1 to 3, 2. Do you, see, do you see that the y values are staying the same, but the x values are changing? So what does that mean? It means the change in y is going to be 0 over some random change in x. And 0 divided by x is going to be 0. But let me prove it to you. Like, let's just take this value here and this value here, okay? So therefore, we're going to call this point 2 and we're going to call this point 1, right? So we're going to say, okay, fine. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So the y2 here is 3 minus the y1 here, which we're going to call, which is 3. The x2 is 1 minus, the x1 is minus 1. 3 minus 3 is 0 over 2, which equals 0. So horizontal lines have a gradient of 0. Okay, horizontal lines have a gradient of 0. Moving swiftly on vertical lines. Okay, and again, I'm just going to prove it to you. Let's say that we've got that this is, I don't know, this is the zero line, so let's make this minus six. So this point here would be one minus six. This point over here would be, I don't know, four minus six. Okay, so let's just call this point one and this point two. So do you agree then if that's the case, we can say that the change in y is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You always write the formula down so that the teacher knows what you're doing. Right, so this here is point 2. So it's going to be minus 6 y2 minus 6 minus the first one um, minus minus 6. Okay, all over and then it's x2 minus x1. I just want to check something. Changing y over changing x was 3, yeah. This is changing y over changing x, y. What am I doing wrong here? That's because x values haven't changed. I'm an idiot. I just realized what I was doing wrong. The x values haven't changed. Just a second. Just a second. The y values have changed, not the x values. Ah, oh, shame. Sorry, guys. 
half asleep. So the x value is a minus 6, okay? So x value is a minus 6. So therefore, this is going to be minus 6, 4, and this will be minus 6, 1. Sorry, man. I don't know what I was thinking. So therefore, it's going to be 4 minus 1 over minus 6 minus minus 6. That's much better. So 4 minus 1 is 3 over minus 6 plus 6, which is 3 over 0. And you can't divide by 0 because that is effectively dividing by infinity. Okay, you're going to get infinity. So therefore, this is going to be basically it is not applicable. Okay, it doesn't have a gradient whatsoever. Right, finally, parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines are basically your gradient if this is m1 and this is m2 then m1 has to equal m2 for them to be parallel that is the rule gradient line for the parallel lines the gradients have to be equal okay and you can think of this as being the same as if you had let's say this is a triangle okay and this is y and this is x do you agree that using trig, just if we have to think about trig, trig would say that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, right? So do you agree that it'd be y over x is tan theta? So tan theta equals y over x. So it's a ratio. So if this is 4 over 3, then always tan of theta is going to be 4 over 3. So it could be 8 over 6. It could be 16 over 12. But it's always a ratio of 4 over 3, right? So if I had another value over here on this big graph, and let's just choose this line here, and I call this y1 over x1, your tan theta is going to be y1 over x1 is going to have exactly the same ratio. And like I said, it doesn't matter. It could be 16 over 12, the change in y over change in x. It could be 16 over 12. But the point is that if I divided both of those by 4, I'd end up with 4 over 3. The ratio is the same. And because of that, remember that the gradient is the change in y over change in x. And what have we just done? We've just been looking at the change in y over change in x. And therefore, parallel lines are always going to have the same gradient. Okay, grade 11s, that's enough for today. We will carry on with this on Wednesday. And obviously, I'm just doing revision now. We're just going to quickly rush through the rest of the revision. And then we're going to move on to proper grade 11, analytical geometry or coordinate geometry, whatever you want to call it. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.